Prop 47 introduces some changes into sentencing laws for certain felonies that are often considered less serious by popular opinion. With the popularity of shows like Law and Order today, I imagine many of us understand the different prosecution categories that match particular crimes. At the lowest level are infractions, crimes like speeding, jaywalking, or running a red light, that typically don't involve trials or jail time simply a fine or a community service. At the next level are misdemeanors, things like petty theft or serious vandalism, which have the potential for a more serious punishment. The level above that is felony, which includes crimes like manslaughter, illegal possession of a firearm, or identity theft. Felonies can also be punished more severely if they are a serious felony, such as assault with a deadly weapon or taking a hostage or if they are a violent felony, such as rape or murder. Felonies can also be both violent and serious. Beyond these categories, there are also crimes classified as wobblers that can be charged as either a misdemeanor or a felony. This can result in vastly different conviction, as misdemeanors are punishable by a maximum of one year in prison and a $1,000 fine, while felonies can involve years, even life, in state prison. Examples of wobblers range from certain types of vandalism to illegal possession of a firearm to certain types of drug possession. Depending on the circumstances of the crime, these could be charged at different levels. Prop 47 will downgrade some of these wobblers to misdemeanors only, eliminating the possibility of charging them as felonies. The first wobbler downgraded is theft of something valued at less than $950. Currently, theft of something worth less than $950 is usually considered petty theft and punishable as a misdemeanor, but there are some circumstances, such as the theft of a car, that could possibly be charged as grand theft even if the item stolen was technically worth less than $950. As a grand theft, the crime would normally be considered a felony. This affects the theft of property, shoplifting, writing bad checks, even receiving stolen property. Lastly, this proposition would also downgrade the famously debated drug possession to a misdemeanor. All of these crimes would now be considered solely misdemeanors and would no longer be punishable as felonies. I must note that this would not affect marijuana possession, as that already can only be charged at most as a misdemeanor. This change, however, would not apply to someone with a previous conviction of some other serious or violent felony, related or unrelated, or if they are a registered sex offender. In general, this is typically already the practice of district attorneys, as criminal history is usually the deciding factor when charging a wobbler crime, but this proposition would set that policy in stone. Since this proposition is downgrading sentencing laws, it will affect anyone who has previously been charged with these crimes as felonies, meaning there are thousands of convicted felons who will have to have their sentences reviewed and may possibly be released from their sentences early. Depending on the number of crimes they have committed, however, this decrease in sentence term may not be very significant. On top of that, there is a provision in the proposition that prevents resentencing in the case of criminals who, quote, pose an unreasonable risk of danger to public safety. And yes, for those of you wondering, that standard is just as vague and subjective in the proposition as it sounds when I say it. In terms of costs, it is likely that this proposition will save some costs for both state prisons and court time, as fewer crimes may be charged as felonies. The unfortunate aspect of this proposition is that the California Director of Finance will be required to actually come up with some kind of estimate of the money that is saved through these changes, which is by no means easy to calculate, and redirect that spending towards programs that may help prevent crime in theory. 25% of the savings will be directed toward reducing school truancy and dropout rates. 10% will be directed toward victim services, and 65% directed to mental health and drug abuse problems. Thus, even if this proposition is successful, it will not save California any money, merely redirect it. On top of that, these funds will be fungible, meaning that just because additional funds are directed toward one particular program, it doesn't mean that funds already directed to that program can't be redirected back to something else. Thus, there is no guarantee that the state will see any increase in spending for these programs, even if the state does save money on criminal justice system costs.
The last thing to consider is that this proposition may affect plea bargains that prosecutors make with suspects. Often, a prosecutor can save the time of a trial by offering an incentive for the suspect to plead guilty, namely by offering to charge the suspect with a lesser crime. This bargaining only works if the prosecutor has sufficient range of penalties that can be imposed, and when that range is limited, less suspects may be willing to plead guilty, thus incurring additional trial expenses that otherwise wouldn't be incurred.